There are 20 YouTube settings that can f a small YouTube channel, meaning you get no views. For this first setting, you're gonna go into your YouTube studio, go to content and hover over one of your videos. Just click on details like so. Now, if we keep coming down, we're gonna see this setting here, publish to subscriptions feed and notify subscribers. This is going to be, for most people, automatically checked. In my case, it's grayed out, but when you upload a brand new video and you come down to the same section, you'll have the option to toggle this on and off. And the problem I see a lot of small YouTubers doing is leaving this checked when they have a lot of content on their channel that's completely unrelated from each other. For example, let's say I have a Star Wars channel and I'm posting a video about Spider-Man. If I leave this checkbox ticked, YouTube is going to promote my Spider-Man video to my existing subscribers who are all Star Wars fans, but they won't click on it, they won't watch it, and that's gonna send the algorithm very negative signals about that video. It's gonna say, hey, this is a bad video. Don't promote it to more people. And then your video dies along with your hopes and dreams. So again, if you're publishing a video that you're not sure your existing subscribers, no matter how small your channel is, are going to want to click on and watch, uncheck this button. Yes, the video will grow much slower in the beginning, but it's not going to get the wrong data through YouTube promoting your video to your past subscribers who aren't gonna be interested in that content. Next thing I wanna show you also on this same video page, just below the playlist section, and it's called the copper section. Basically, you need to accurately designate whether or not your video is made for kids or not. And when we say made for kids, just because kids would find the video interesting doesn't mean it's made for them. In this case, kids is defined as people under the age of 13. And I think we can safely say that kids would be interested in watching Marvel movies. That doesn't necessarily mean though that Marvel movies are specifically designed for people under the ages of 13. There just happens to be some audience overlap. On the other hand, Peppa Pig, probably appealing to many people under the age of 13. However, most older audiences are not gonna be interested at all. And so it'd be safe to say that Peppa Pig is designed for kids. Hope that makes sense. Now, why this is important is one, if you misdesignate this, technically you could cop a very expensive fine, although I haven't actually seen it happen. And the other thing to be aware of here is that if you check yes, this video is made for kids, the video is going to have very limited options. There's going to be no comments, you're not going to be able to make money from the video, and a whole bunch of other annoying things. A little bit technical as well, but really important to get this one right. The next setting, we're going to scroll a little bit down from where we just were, still on the video page, and we're going to come to allow automatic chapters and key moments. Chapters are when you see the video play bar on YouTube broken up into segments with a title for each segment. Now you can create chapters manually, like I'll briefly show you how to do in a second, or you can allow YouTube to automatically chapter your videos. The problem with this, YouTube's AI is still not very good. It can add really dodgy chapters to your videos that are very confusing or that just completely spoil and give away your entire video. And so unless you're like an education channel and you think the chapters are essential to your video, but you're too lazy to create them yourself and you're willing to risk it, just turn this one off. If you're gonna add chapters to your video, what I'd recommend instead is that you add them manually. Now you can do this anywhere in your video description, but what you're gonna do is start off by typing zero colon zero zero and then title your first chapter so we're going to be really original and do like intro then what we're going to do is we're going to add the timestamp of the end of our intro chapter so let's say our intro ends at 15 seconds so we're going to go zero 15 and then we're going to type the name of our next chapter let's say like story now let's say the story component of our video ends at like three minutes so we're going to go three colon zero zero and then we'll type the name of our next chapter it might be something like that and you just keep doing this throughout your entire video until your whole video is time stamped out in this format and your video will then show up with chapters. Next thing we're going to do, we're going to come down again just below the cursed automatic chapters box and we're going to look at the featured places box. This is basically going to give YouTube permission to dox you, which you obviously don't want. You don't want YouTube telling your viewers exactly where you are in your videos. So we're just going to turn that one off so that we can not get stalked by our viewers. Now, automatic concepts, I would probably turn this one off as well because again, you're relying on YouTube's AI to know exactly what your automatic concept are. It is an experiment at this point as well. So turn it off just to be safe. If there's something really that confusing, then you should probably clarify it in your actual video. Now what we're going to do, we're going to keep scrolling down and we're going to come down to this section, licensing and distribution. Now this is going to default to the standard YouTube license, which doesn't kill your videos, but it makes it more difficult for other people to reuse your content. My controversial opinion is anyone reusing your content is free marketing for your videos. And if their content happens to do way 
better than your video, then it's a great case study for you to learn from. If they reuse your video and it gets like 10 times the amount of views as you, you can look at that and be like, hey, what did they do that made them successful and how can I do that but better in my next upcoming videos? So it's win-win either way. So what I would do is click on here and change this to Creative Commons Attribution, which is gonna give other creators permission to reuse your content in their videos. This next one, beginners do this all the time and it really bugs me and it hurts their channels. When you start off a channel, if you have no content, obviously your channel is going to have no content, but when you start creating content, your channel homepage, when you go to it, is going to look something like this. Now this is bad, it means you're gonna get a lot less views than you probably could be, and so we're gonna fix that. On your channel, you can find this through YouTube Studio as well, but you can just come to here and customize channel, and it's gonna take us to this page. Basically, if we come down here, we can see featured sections. This is what's going to allow us to do that cool thing that a lot of big channels do, that makes their channel homepage look full and vibrant and have lots of videos on it, meaning that you potentially have more opportunities to get more views. What we can see is these big channels have multiple sections of content on their homepage. And to get something that looks like that, what you're gonna do is hit on add section. And then what you can do is select videos, popular videos, short videos, or you can even feature things like playlists or past live streams. Now, another thing that can hurt your channel a lot, if you're not predominantly a YouTube shorts channel, is YouTube is really trying to push shorts right now because TikTok. And so by default, YouTube is going to have a shorts featured section at the top of your channel homepage. That means that if you have shorts and long form videos on your channel, the first row of content people are going to see when they land on your channel is a list of your YouTube shorts. Long story short, and no pun intended, what you want people to be seeing most of the time, again, unless you're a dedicated YouTube shorts channel, is your long form videos. It's gonna get the most watch time, it's gonna give you the opportunity to make a more in-depth connection with your audience. And so what we're gonna do is either, if you have lots of different featured sections, you can move this shorts videos thing down to the bottom by clicking and dragging. So it's only gonna be found by people who don't find anything satisfying at the top of your channel page and are just scrolling down, hopefully catch a few of them. Or if you don't have enough content to have a lot of featured sections on your channel, I would say just click on these three dots and just remove this. Then come up here and hit publish and you're done. Now, speaking of small YouTube channels, another essential setting is found in your YouTube studio also. So if you're in your YouTube studio, you're going to want to come down to settings then in settings, you're going to come to channel. In channel, you're going to come to feature eligibility. Now, what you're gonna to wanna to do is click on these drop downs, basically complete these verification steps because it's gonna let you make longer videos. And most importantly, it's going to allow you to add custom thumbnails to your videos and live streams, which is a killer feature that if you don't use, you're going to be killing your videos in the bad sense. So another thing you're gonna to wanna to do is go to settings, then you're gonna to come to channel. In channel, you're gonna to want to actually select your country of residence. Now this might sound like a really small and trivial thing. Reason this is important is that when you get monetized, this is gonna have like some implications on tax and stuff. So if you don't select this correctly, or if you do what some sneaky people do and they try to select the US because they wanna try and trick people into thinking that they should be promoted to more US audiences because that's like a high RPM niche and they're gonna make more money. No, you're not gonna make more money because you're going to have all these tax issues and it's just gonna be annoying. So just make sure this is set right because set incorrectly, it could be really annoying and mess up your hard earned paychecks. Now this one's a really ninja setting that actually isn't really a setting, but I'm gonna include it. So you're gonna come to your channel and then you're going to come and copy your link. And then what you're gonna do is open up a text doc, gonna paste your channel link in there. And then what you're gonna type in is question mark sub underscore confirmation equals one. Now, when someone clicks this link, they're going to be redirected back to your channel. And if they're on desktop, they are going to be presented with a pop-up that's gonna prompt them to subscribe to your YouTube channel. So you can use this link if you have related social media, or you can literally just use it in like the descriptions of your videos, in the about section or bio of your channel, which we'll talk more about later. And just having this link in more places can actually surprisingly increase your subscriber count. I did a video on this and I broke down the math and in a perfect world, scenario, you can actually be getting 67% more subscribers just using this link and strategically placing it around your channel. I might leave a link to that video at the end if you want more info on how to do that. Okay, this next one, you're gonna to come to your YouTube studio. You're going to come down go to customization. Then we're going to come to branding. In branding, you're gonna be able to upload a custom channel banner, profile picture. Most of you have probably already done that. The thing that a bunch of small YouTubers haven't done yet is to upload a video watermark down here. Now what you wanna do is grab something that looks like this. It should have some sort of subscribe call to action on it. Anyway, you're gonna hit done on that. And then what you're gonna do, another mistake people do is they 
just leave it on the default settings. We're not gonna do that. We're gonna come down to entire video. What that's gonna do is add a little watermark like this in the bottom right hand side of our video. For the entire video, if someone clicks on that watermark, they're gonna be able to subscribe to our channel. Helpful when people are watching your videos in full screen mode on their devices and the channel subscribe feature is not showing up for them. I'll try and remember to put a download link below for this particular image if you want to use it. And as always, with any of these settings that I've been talking about, you usually have to hit like publish or save or change somewhere. So just make sure you do that because otherwise you'll be dumb and I'll laugh at you. All right, our next tip, we're going to come down to settings and we're going to come to channel. Here in keywords, what you're going to do is add some keywords that are related to your channel and your channel name. So it's going to make it a little bit easier, supposedly, for people to be able to find your YouTube channel when they're actively looking for it. I actually haven't found this to have a huge impact, but pretty easy to add some keywords in there. So I guess you might as well do it. And so unless you like the idea of not getting more views and subscribers in the future, then you should probably do this. So for example, I might put my channel name, hit enter, that's gonna add a tag. I can put individual words like cest channel, or I can put really long keyword phrases in here that are highly related to said channel. Now, the next thing I want you to do, we're gonna come back to customization and we're going to go to basic info, not branding, you didn't see that. And in your description, you're going to insert a description. Now, that might seem like it doesn't matter very much, but it does nowadays because with a recent YouTube update, the first line of your description actually shows up on your channel homepage when people visit it. So if you do what a lot of these small YouTubers do, where it's like, hey guys, welcome back to my channel on this channel, cut out, it's truncated, viewers can't see anything. You can wanna use that space wisely. You could potentially be promoting your sub underscore confirmation link we talked about earlier to maybe get more subscribers. Or you wanna say something that makes people like you and reassures your viewers or your ideal viewers that they're in the right place. So if you have a Minecraft Let's Play channel, you could be like, here you'll find the best Minecraft Let's Plays on the internet, which is really cringy and boring and you shouldn't do that. You shouldn't be creating a Minecraft Let's Play channel in the first place. Let's just establish that because unless you hate the idea of getting views it's not a good idea. But you get my point, use this space to your advantage to actually encourage more results. The next setting we're gonna do, we're gonna come back down to settings and we're going to come down to uploading defaults and then come down to visibility. Now here are some cool time-saving sayings where you can input a default title, default description template, default tags, etc., etc. But these don't really destroy your channel. What can destroy your channel, or at the very least, destroy your ego when you accidentally upload a video that was never meant to see the light of day, is this visibility setting here. Now on default, YouTube is going to upload all your videos to public. So once you upload them and hit publish, it's gonna immediately be sent out to all of your fans. So a really nice safety precaution, click on this, change it to unlisted, hit save. That way next time, or you upload a video that was meant to go live at a later date, you're not going to accidentally post it. Definitely not speaking for experience. Haven't, haven't ever done that. I don't know what you're talking about. Stop the cap. So the next setting, we're gonna to come to settings again. On this prompt, we're gonna come down to community. And then in community, we're gonna scroll all the way down to the bottom to blocked words. Again, some useful settings in here. They're not necessarily going to tank your channel though. What could tank your channel is having spammers and scammers in the comment sections of your videos. In some circumstances, could lead to a very negative experience for your viewers. The algorithm might pick that up and it might think that those viewers actually had a negative experience with your video, not the actual comments within your video. So those viewers leave, they're all angry and disappointed and annoyed. And when YouTube shows them that post video satisfaction survey, they're gonna be like, no, I hated my experience. And then the algorithm is gonna be like, it's the biggest piece of dog shit. And it's gonna kill your reach and you don't want that. So a way around that is to one, add blocked words in here. You can add sensitive, highly offensive terms like this, just to make sure, you know, keeping everything family friendly. But you can also add, you know, what kind of words I'm talking about. <laughs> What I find more helpful though is that a lot of scammers and spammers, they target certain niches. And so the wording is often very similar across multiple of their messages. So if you can figure out what that wording is, you can just insert it in here. And then when they leave a comment, it's gonna be automatically flagged by YouTube. Another thing, dodgy links, click on this checkbox. People aren't gonna be able to post it. So your viewers and you are not gonna get scammed. Next thing, we're gonna come back to a video settings, go to details and just scroll down. Again, you can find these settings in a video that's already been posted. So you can fix your older videos or you can just edit these as you're uploading a video. The UI is very similar. 
what you're gonna do is come to shorts remixing. Basically, this is gonna let other people create shorts using the content from your video. Again, I would allow this personally because it's free marketing for you. Now, the next thing right below that is category. Usually YouTube's just gonna select a very broad, often wrong category for your video here. What you're gonna do is come in here and actually select the category that your video would most accurately fit into. Especially if you're a smaller channel, this is gonna help the algorithm get a little bit more of an idea of what your video is actually about so it can promote it to the right people and the right audiences to begin with. And how it can do that, especially with some categories now, for example, if I was to go gaming here, it's actually gonna give you an additional dropdown where you can type in the name of your game and select it, and then it's actually gonna show up in your description. It's just gonna make it easier for YouTube to group videos together, figure out what topics videos are about, and then promote related videos to the right viewers. The next thing I wanna talk about is the schedule setting. Now, most of you have probably seen this, so it's nothing new. The problem you probably have is that you're scheduling your videos, if you're scheduling them, at the wrong time. So how are you gonna fix that is come to your YouTube studio, go to analytics, and then you're gonna come across to audience. Now, if you're a very small channel, you might not have access to this yet, which is unfortunate. But if you do, what you'll see when you scroll down is when your viewers are on YouTube, it's gonna show you this little pretty graph. What you're gonna do is look for the brightest, pinkiest, most sexiest rectangles and which day has the highest congregation of them. So for me, it looks like it is Sunday and Monday. And if I hover over this beginning one, what I can see is that Sunday at 1 a.m., very many of my viewers are on YouTube. So when I schedule my videos or shorts, I'm gonna wanna schedule them at this time or a little bit before this time, just so I can take as much of an advantage as possible of all of my viewers being online that period of time. Next thing we're gonna do, come to content and then select one of your videos, let's just say this one, and then come down to end screen. Basically, this is going to allow you to add a clickable link to another one of your videos or a playlist at the end of your video, specifically the last 20 seconds. Not having this can be a big no-no for your videos. Basically, the YouTube algorithm loves it not just when viewers watch your videos all the way to the end, but when viewers watch multiple of your videos consecutively in a row. This is called session time. So what you're going to want to do in here, if you haven't already got an end screen, is hit plus on the element thing, select say video. It's going to add a new video element like so. You you can drag it around, position it, set the time frame for it, and then hit save. In this particular case, this element is gonna promote my most recent upload, but you can also make these elements promote the video that the YouTube algorithm thinks is going to be best for them, or you can select a specific custom video yourself by clicking on this option and then selecting said custom video. And then you just hit save. This next one's to do with YouTube Shorts. Basically, when you upload a YouTube Short and you go through the upload process, in the video elements section, there's a new setting where you can add a related video. This is basically going to allow you to select a specific video, let's say this one, and then when you publish your short, viewers of the short are gonna be able to see a link that looks like this. If they click on it, they're gonna be taken from your short to your full length long form video. And I'd say most small creators probably wanna get as much data as possible on their videos. So you're gonna to wanna to connect your shorts to your videos so you can get as many additional views as possible. But if you've applied all these settings and you're still not getting any views, you're probably gonna to wanna to watch the video I'll leave on screen. It's gonna give you an in-depth step-by-step breakdown of a few pretty cool strategies that can significantly increase your views. I'll see you there.